This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The SQL injection vulnerabilities level 200 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development lifecycle fulfills in trusted application development. It also provides an overview of one of the most common vulnerabilities encountered today called SQL injection, as well as a discussion on how the Microsoft SDL can be applied to prevent attacks based on the exploitation of this vulnerability. Addressing this subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. In this presentation, we will complete an overview of the Microsoft SDL, SQL injection vulnerabilities, and how attacks based on this particular type of vulnerability can be prevented through successfully employing the Microsoft SDL. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, and executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL, and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement rather than disrupt the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements, exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyzed with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is the quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is optional, operational and used by the customers. 
In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on SQL injection vulnerabilities and how they can be prevented using the guidance, process, and tools provided by the SDL. SQL injection vulnerabilities are one of the most commonly encountered application security vulnerabilities today. SQL injection can occur whenever unvalidated data is used to construct dynamic SQL statements that are later executed by a database. This type of vulnerability can give malicious users the ability to control the execution flow of the affected SQL statements. With this ability, malicious users can execute unauthorized commands using the database privileges granted to your application. The potential for damage increases especially in scenarios where your application is granted excessive or highly privileged database connection rights. Like many other application security implementation issues, SQL injection vulnerabilities stem from the lack of or improper input validation. This situation is further exacerbated if the input data is used in the construction of dynamic SQL statements without the use of type safe parameters or if the connection used to access the database has excessive rights. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft which are incorporated in its SDL and more specifically in this presentation focusing on SQL injection are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. Before you see a demonstration of a SQL injection attack, let's take a few moments to establish an understanding of the internals of SQL injection. Here is a sample SQL statement that reads a tracking ID and selects all relevant data to that ID from the shipment orders database table. This scenario is typical in applications where a user has purchased an item and needs to be able to track its delivery en route to its final destination. Let's now look at different input scenarios, the resulting SQL statements that get executed, and how each can lead to exploitable conditions. In the first scenario, input ID is set to 1000. The database simply executes select star from shipment orders where ID equals 1000 and retrieves the data for that order corresponding to ID 1000, if it exists. This is the expected and correct behavior. Now, let's look at some more interesting ID inputs and see how they can be used by malicious users to perform unauthorized actions. In the second scenario, ID is specified by the malicious user as 1000, but some other data is also included. Notice here the malicious user is entering the shipment ID as 1000 quote, semicolon, drop table, shipment orders, semicolon, dash, dash. When this gets inserted into the original select statement above, the database actually sees two different SQL queries to execute. The first is to retrieve the information for the order corresponding to ID 1000, and the second is to drop tables labeled shipment orders. If this were a real-life situation, all shipment data stored in that table would be deleted, and this is very bad. In the third and last scenario, ID is specified by a malicious user as 1000 quote semicolon exec xp command shell and then some command to execute. As with the previous scenario, the database server sees two different SQL queries to execute. The first is to retrieve information for the order corresponding to ID 1000 and the second is to execute xp command shell stored procedure and have it execute any command that the malicious user provides. This is horrible. Please note that the double dashes is the SQL equivalent of a comment character in a programming language like C Sharp, C, or C++. It indicates to the database that anything after the double dashes should be considered as a comment and not executed. In the attacks above, the additional single quote that the malicious user inserted would have imbalanced the number of quotes in the executing SQL query. The double dashes was used to comment out the final quote and semicolon that would have imbalanced the SQL query caused a database error and prevented the attack from succeeding. 
SQL injection attacks have been well understood for many years, yet they are still one of the most commonly encountered vulnerabilities today. In 2008, SQL injection ranked as the second most prevalent web application security vulnerability. Here are, for example, some news stories regarding SQL injection. In March 2006, the tourism website of the Indian government was found to be vulnerable to SQL injection attacks. In August 2007, the website of the United Nations was defaced using a SQL injection attack. The main website's content was replaced with messages regarding worldwide political issues. More recently, in January 2008, a mass SQL injection attack occurred resulting in tens of thousands of systems being attacked. Victims of the mass attack included numerous government, academic, and private sector entities. Now it's time to take a look at some actual SQL injection vulnerabilities and see how a malicious user can exploit these vulnerabilities. In the coming demonstration, we will be taking on the role of the malicious user and attacking a demonstration website called the Contoso Credit Union. As indicated in the previous slide, please note that while the demonstration you are about to see is a series of SQL injection attacks against a web-based application, SQL injection attacks are not limited to web-based applications. Any application, regardless of the platform or language it has been implemented with, that uses a database, regardless of the database application, is potentially susceptible to this type of attack. Let's begin the demonstration. The Contoso Credit Union is a fictitious financial institution where users have the ability to create accounts, transfer money, and access other services. On the main website, the Contoso Credit Union is having a promotional sweepstakes whereby users tell the Contoso Credit Union what they would do with a million dollars. At the end of each month, the Contoso Credit Union staff awards the million dollar prize to the best entry. However, the entry submission page has a SQL injection vulnerability. Let's go ahead and submit an entry into the million dollar sweepstakes. To enter the sweepstakes, all you need to do is enter your name, an email address, and a description of what you would do with the money. After you click the submit button, your entry will be saved and shown on the right hand side of the window. One rule to the sweepstakes is that only one entry per email is allowed. Any attempts to submit entries with the same email address are blocked. Let's go ahead and try to do this and see what happens. And from the error message shown here in red, the entry page has blocked our entry. Malicious users will first try to identify potential SQL injection vectors in applications. Let's try to inject some SQL statements into the name field of the sweepstakes entry page and observe what happens. The application returned an error message indicating that there was a syntax error near the semicolon character. If a syntax error is reported back, this means that the application tried to execute something, namely our SQL statement, but could not. This provides strong evidence that the name field is a potential SQL injection attack vector. In fact, if you tried to inject SQL statements into any one of these three fields, you would find similar results. Please note that a SQL error message is not always indicative of the presence of a SQL injection vulnerability. As a malicious user, 
One thing that you might be interested in is winning that million dollar prize. How could you rig this contest so that you would be guaranteed to win this prize money? You know at the end of each month, the Contoso Credit Union staff reviews the entries submitted and awards the prize money to the best entry. What if thousands or hundreds of thousands of people enter this contest? Your chances of being picked then are very slim. But what if you were the only entry in this contest? Then, by the rules of the game, the Contoso Credit Union staff would have to pick you and you would win the contest. To accomplish this, you would need to delete all entries in the contest database. One major problem. You don't know the name of the table that stores the contest entries. You can, however, determine this using SQL injection and by examining the application error messages. Let's see what happens when we enter the following entry. Notice here that the database server has indicated the column name promotions million dollar sweepstakes dot name is invalid due to some missing clauses. With this error message, the database server has revealed two very useful pieces of information. The first piece of information is that the table being accessed is called promotions underscore million dollar sweepstakes. The second piece of information is that the first column in the table is called name. As a side note, disclosing information such as the detailed table information seen here is an example of an information disclosure vulnerability. This is the scenario where an application reveals information that may be useful to a malicious user who is trying to attack that application. As a general best practice, developers should create custom error handlers and only provide detailed information such as this when debugging the application. Now that you know the name of the contest table, to delete the entries of the table, all you would need to do is the following. Notice now in the right hand corner that all previous entries are now deleted. With the SQL injection vulnerability, you have altered the data contained in the contest table, and now you only need to submit your entry to ensure that you'll be awarded the prize. With the SQL injection vulnerability, you could also have performed other nefarious tasks such as dropping tables and making unauthorized system configuration changes. There are several common myths regarding SQL injection vulnerabilities and their exploitability. In this slide, we will look at some of these common myths and discuss why each is inaccurate. One of the most common myths about SQL injection is that it is a problem that is exclusive to applications built on Microsoft SQL Server. This simply is not true. SQL injection utilizes the SQL language, which is a standard database language designed to retrieve and manage data stored on relational databases. Any database that understands SQL is potentially susceptible to this type of attack. While the SQL injection demonstration you just saw did use Microsoft SQL Server, remember that any database that processes SQL, such as Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and MySQL, is susceptible to similar attacks. The second common myth regarding SQL injection 
is that SQL injection vulnerabilities are only applicable in web-based application scenarios. This again is simply not true. Certainly, SQL injection is encountered quite frequently in web-based scenarios. However, applications that do not use a web-based front-end, such as traditional client-server applications, are equally as susceptible. Remember, any application that uses a database in some manner is potentially susceptible to SQL injection attacks. Another common myth regarding SQL injection is that transport security protocols such as secure socket layers and IP security can provide protection from SQL injection attacks. The SQL language is processed at the application level. Therefore, any attack based on SQL also exists at the application level. Protocols such as SSL and IPsec are processed prior to the application level. They are processed at the network level. Therefore, the use of these protocols does not affect a malicious user's ability to successfully execute a SQL injection attack. The final myth regarding SQL injection is that SQL injection attacks can only be conducted by non-authenticated malicious users. That is, the threat of SQL injection attacks from authenticated users is not possible. This myth incorrectly assumes that database queries will not be processed based on input data provided by non-authenticated users. The reality is that database queries are dynamically constructed and executed on behalf of both unauthenticated users and authenticated users. Therefore, the threat of SQL injection attacks exists for both types of users. Recall that SQL injection is an application vulnerability that manifests due to developers not properly validating data that is used to build dynamic SQL statements. Properly validating data for correctness can greatly reduce the threat of SQL injection attacks. Input validation is a broad stroke preventative measure that all developers should be practicing to reduce the number of application vulnerabilities and not just SQL injection. Specific to SQL injection, the SDL has three requirements. SQL parameterized queries. The first SDL requirement is that any application that accesses a database must do so using parameterized queries. Parameterized queries use placeholders, or sometimes referred to as parameterized commands, to specify input data. Using parameterized queries allows the database executing the query to distinguish between executable and non-executable SQL data. In a sense, with parameterized commands, you are indicating to the database that this section of the SQL statement is data only and must not be executed should it contain any valid SQL commands. A demonstration regarding how parameterized queries can be used to remediate the SQL injection attack successfully executed against Contoso Credit Union will be shown shortly. Stored procedures. Another requirement of the SDL concerning SQL injection is that any application accessing a database should do so using only stored procedures and that the store procedure must not use the exact at SQL construct. Using store procedures help reduce the threat of SQL injection attacks since type checking is available for parameters. Any attempt to violate the specified type, as in the case with most SQL injection attacks, result in an application exception. Using the exact at SQL construct essentially reproduces the same SQL injection condition now at the stored procedure level rather than at the application code level. Note that stored procedures do not remediate SQL injection vulnerabilities. Rather, they make it more difficult for malicious users to successfully conduct SQL injection attacks. SQL exec only permission. The final SDL requirement regarding SQL injection is to only grant execute permissions on all stored procedures and grant that permission only for the application domain group. With this defensive measure, if a malicious user attempts to access any database object outside the scope of the stored procedure that they are attacking, the database will greatly limit, if not entirely block, that requested access. In a sense, this defensive measure concedes that a malicious user will be able to exploit some SQL statement in some way. However, the potential damage that can be inflicted by that malicious user will be isolated and contained. Let's now take a look at the actual Contoso Credit Union code that was exploited during the demonstration and see how to use parameterized queries to prevent future attacks. During the demonstration there were in fact two SQL statements that were exploited and this slide will focus only on the first. 
The techniques that will be shown here can be applied to both SQL statements. The first exploitable SQL statement is shown here. This was the SQL statement that was used to ensure that each entry had a unique email address associated with it. In this code snippet, the email address is concatenated with the SELECT statement, which is later passed to the SQL command object for eventual execution. It was due to this concatenation that malicious users were able to conduct a SQL injection attack. Here is how similar code would appear using SQL parameterized queries to prevent SQL injection attack. When refactoring existing SQL statements to use parameterized queries, the first task is to remove any concatenation or insertion of input data and replace it with placeholders. If you focus your attention on the first highlighted section in the second box, the concatenation of the email text box has been removed and has been replaced with the at p email, which will serve as our SQL parameter placeholder. Next, a SQL parameter object is created and set to look for the placeholder called at p email. The parameter is then assigned the value from the email text box. When the database executes the SQL statement, it will look for the at p email placeholder and substitute the data only value contained in the SQL parameter object. The last step is to add that parameter to the SQL command as shown here. With three simple code changes, this section of our application is now resistant to SQL injection attack. Let's apply this implementation technique to the Contosa Credit Union and see how parameterized queries prevents future SQL injection attacks. In this demonstration, we will see how to implement parameterized SQL queries to reduce the risk from SQL injection attacks against the Contoso Credit Union. In particular, we will be fixing the code used for the Million Dollar Sweepstakes site, which was attacked in the previous demonstration. Let's start by first opening up the C-sharp implementation file used by the sweepstakes. This is the method that is called when the user clicks the submit button on the million dollar sweepstakes site. As it is configured currently, this method will call the non-parameterized version of the submit button underscore click called submit button underscore click underscore non-parameterized. Let's look at the implementation of submit button underscore click underscore non-parameterized. Here is the code that was used to ensure that each entry has a unique email address associated with it. As shown in the highlighted code, the select query is dynamically built by attaching the contents of the email text box to the end of the query. The query is then associated with the SQL command object and then later executed, which allowed the SQL injection attack to succeed. The parameterized version of this code in submit button underscore click underscore parameterize takes a different approach in that it uses a SQL parameter object to hold the value of the email instead of direct string concatenation. In this parameterized and SQL resistant code version, a SQL parameter called pemail is created and at pemail is specified as the placeholder for the incoming data. The type of data and varchar and the size of the data 250 is also specified in the SQL parameter object. Finally, the parameter object is added to the SQL command object parameters collection 
and the command object is executed. Using SQL parameters has the effect of neutralizing any malicious SQL statements contained within the email data. This is the query that is used to enter the data submitted by the user into the sweepstakes database. Similar to the vulnerable version of the first code snippet, this code concatenates the contestant name, email, and description of the, of the entry to the end of the SQL query, allowing a malicious user to exploit this query. Let's now see what the parameterized version of this code would look like. Here, the SQL injection vulnerability was remedied in the submit button underscore click underscore parameterize method by specifying the SQL parameter objects for the name, email, and description of the entry for the submitted entry. Let's now put the parameterized version of our code in action and see if our million dollar sweepstakes page is now resistant to SQL injection. And to do this, all we need to do is comment out our non-parameterized version and uncomment out our parameterized version. So here we are back at the Contoso Credit Union homepage. Let's go ahead and try to submit an entry. And here's my entry. Let's now see if we can use SQL injection to delete this entry. And as you can see, the original entry was preserved and the SQL injection attack was deflected. In addition to safer coding practices to prevent SQL injection, you should also be regularly reviewing your code for this type of vulnerability. Any section of code that is accessing a database with a dynamically built SQL statement is suspect. Microsoft has published several code scanning tools to assist developers and testers in this endeavor. It should be noted that these tools are designed to assist in code review and not to replace, obviate, the overall code review process. These tools are effective at identifying only certain coding patterns that can lead to SQL injection and nothing else. These tools should be combined with expert manual code review and other security verification practices. This concludes the discussion on SQL injection vulnerabilities. In this presentation, an overview of SQL injection vulnerabilities was provided, along with a demonstration illustrating the potential damage that may be inflicted from successfully executed SQL injection attacks. The presentation then concluded by providing an overview of how the Microsoft SDL can be applied to prevent SQL injection attacks. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation, which focused on SQL injection, have been shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. 
This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecurityllc.com.